Amen. Thank you, Brother Dalton. Appreciate that ministry and song this morning. Appreciate him helping leading songs as well today. Tremendous song for where we're going this morning with the sermon. And I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being here this morning. Those who are joined us live, those online, thank you. Always great to see you here. My heart was encouraged. You sang really, really, really well today. And uh, boy, that encourages my heart when the church of God sings about their God and what he does. And so I was encouraged today and so thankful for your time being here. It's a little slippery out there, so be careful while you're driving. If you normally drive 30 miles over the speed limit, I'd cut it down to 29. And so just you're real safe out there. We're sure glad you're here, and I'm so thankful for all the people that are here, those who are visiting with us. We're special, especially glad you're here. Make sure you stop by and see us in the kiosk on the way out. If you have your Bibles, open to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews today. Our theme this year is only God, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. Only God. We've looked at a few weeks now, this concept of only God, and how that Last year, and it's not a new phenomenon for us, but last year, really, the curtains were pulled back on the ideas of our heart and life, the belief system. We saw a lot of things in 2020, and 2021's not all it's cracked up to be, but God is still good. We're looking at only God, and as we continue on that theme this year, only God, I want to draw our minds, our thoughts, our hearts today to a a small, seemingly, but extremely significant truth this morning. It would appear at first glance for some to not make much difference, but in in reality it makes all the difference. There are some things at times that from our minds appear to be insignificant, but actually they're the opposite, they're extremely significant. Things that, something that is Seemingly at times almost pointless, but in actuality very powerful. Negligible and irrelevant, but actually notable and important. And that's the matter and truth of our faith this morning. People have faith and lose faith in a lot of things. Heading up into the Super Bowl, it apparently came out that Tom Brady would text his team early in the morning and about how we're going to win this game. Have faith we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. And they ended up winning the game. Because he texted them in the morning, I have no idea. Probably because they scored more points than the other team. It's typically how most games work. We have faith in all sorts of things. You have faith in the pew this morning. You have faith in the bank that holds your money. You think that you, have, you believe that if you go there to get it, that they will give it to you. That's a lot of faith. We have faith in the supply chain. Last year, toilet paper was scarce. Before that, you didn't think about going to buy toilet paper. You just went and bought it. You had faith that if you went to the store, they'd have toilet paper on the shelf. And all of a sudden, it wasn't on the shelves any longer. And people were hoarding it. My, my. The scarcity of toilet paper. The Bible speaks of our faith in Hebrews chapter 11. If you turn to Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning. I want to challenge us this morning and this evening on the matter of our faith. The God of the impossible. The God who can do the impossible. So don't settle for the possible. In the matter of our faith. Verse number 1 of Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says this. Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith It is impossible. 
Without faith, it is what? Impossible. It does not say it's improbable or unlikely or very hard. It does not say that if you roll the dice, one out of six times it'll happen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, but without faith it is impossible. Not possible. God is the God of the impossible. Don't settle for the possible. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Lord, I thank you for this time that we have. Lord, I ask that you would make this truth clear and plain in our hearts and our lives. Lord, our faith has been tested and will be tested. And Lord, I ask that our faith would be refined, that our faith would be strengthened. And in these times, Lord, that our faith is tested and tried, that it would make it stronger in you. Lord, I pray for all those here this morning and under the sound of my voice and those who may hear this later on. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be touched and challenged this morning, that you would reveal to us areas, Lord, that we have not given only to you in the matter of our faith. Lord, I ask that there's someone who's listening to this who has never trusted you and put their faith in you as a savior, that today they would do that. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Hebrews chapter 11 is often called the faith chapter or the hall of faith. The entire chapter of Hebrews 11, you'll find examples of incredible acts of faith. Incredible works of faith and credible, incredible solutions by faith. Hebrews 11 stands as a testimony to faith that has been exercised. And this morning, I'd like to take some time in this evening to look at this matter of faith as we compare it to our life and to our heart, not just in concept, but in action. The Bible sometimes compares faith or gives example of faith as faith of a child. We're blessed with three children in our house. A little bit older now, but not so old that I cannot remember the faith of a child. You know, children will exercise faith in a multiplicity of ways. You know that when children are small, they take what you say at face value you can tell kids all sorts of things and they have not learned the cynicism that you and I have. If you say to a child, I love you, they believe you. If you say to your spouse, I love you, they say, what do you want and what did you do? If you bring a child a flower that you picked from the outside they say, that's beautiful, Daddy, and they run out and grab you some flowers. If you bring your wife some flowers, different story. A while back, I was at the uh, florist buying some flowers for my wife. I periodically buy flowers. My wife says that she does not care or like flowers. Many women will say this. Men, ignore that statement. <laughs> buy flowers. Even though my wife says she doesn't care about flowers, every time I bring flowers, she loves them. I happened to go to the new florist over on the other side of town, and I went to the florist, I said, I'd like to get some flowers for my wife. Her first question, what did you do? I did not have time to answer. My answer would have been, I'm just buying flowers for my wife. Before I could answer, she said, it must be a bad week. Now I'm in. I said, well, why is that? She goes, men have been stopping by all morning long and all week long to buy flowers for their wives. I said, well, I said, I've not used you before. I was driving past and wanted to get some flowers. And I thought, hey, great opportunity. I would just want to buy some flowers for my wife. And she gave me one of those like, sure, looks. <laughs> Faith is a child. You can tell children something and they actually believe you. Guess what? We're going to stop by on the way home and get ice cream, and they actually believe what you say. 
They get excited because dad said, mom said, uncle said, grandpa said, grandma said, we're having ice cream on the way home. They don't stop to think anything else except they take what you say at face value. When the Bible talks about faith and faith in God, what it in one sense means is taking what God says at face value. So that when God says he loves you, you believe it. When God says he has the best interest for you, you believe it. When God says he'll never leave you nor forsake you, you believe it. When God says that his way is the best way, you actually follow it and believe it because you take what he says at face value. What what happens to children over time? They begin to learn the nuances of the English language and communication. They begin to have some disappointments in life, do they not? Some letdowns. They begin to experience trouble throughout life, and eventually, as they become older and become adults like we are this morning, then when someone says these things, we begin to think, well, what's in it for them? What's their angle? They're going to let me down, just like everybody else. Our faith becomes shaken. And if we're not careful, if we're not cautious, if we're not trying to please God and only God, we will allow those thoughts to influence our faith in God. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Someone said this, your faith ought to get you in trouble at times. If everyone thinks you're nuts, you may be okay. It's okay if some think you are, but if no one thinks you are, you're probably in trouble. Has your faith ever gotten you in trouble? Has anyone ever thought you were nuts because of your faith? If not, your faith may be in trouble. You see, we don't typically operate by faith. We operate by what we can see and what we can figure out. We look at life, we find a good plan, we execute that plan, and then we pray along the way and add God into our perfectly executed, logical, well thought out plan. Lord, help this plan. It's the best plan I could come up with. Lord, it's a really good plan and I need your help in this plan. That's not faith. That's walking by sight. That's doing everything yourself. That's managing life all by yourself. And the Bible says that we must have faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This morning, I want to look at the essence of faith. Faith, what it is, the confidence in the things, the ideas or beliefs that we cannot see. Or faith is a confident expectation of things not yet seen or experienced. I have faith that I'm going to go to heaven one day. I've never been there. In fact, no one on this earth has ever been there. If they say they have, they're lying. The Bible talks about that. Oh, people, a multitude of people have said, well, I saw heaven. I talked to Jesus and this is what he said. And they have some convoluted, crazy thing that they are claiming that Jesus said to them. They're not telling you the truth they may believe it to be the truth but it's not the truth the bible says that's not true but i believe i'm gonna go to heaven one day in fact the bible describes what heaven looks like bible describes what heaven will be like but i've never seen heaven but i have a confident expectation that when i pass from this life that i get to be in heaven with jesus christ and with god forever that is faith a confident expectation And things not yet seen nor experienced. I believe that tomorrow God will still be in charge. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know that tomorrow I wake up and I'm paralyzed. I don't know that. You don't know that. I don't know that tomorrow I won't win the lottery. Now, I don't play the lottery. But people have bought me lottery tickets in the past. Pastor, what do you do? I scratch them off. (laughs) Devil's had the money long enough. We'll put to good use here at First Baptist Church. Pastor, would you tithe off it? You better believe it. 
Don't look at me like that. Some of you have had the same thoughts. You see that Powerball number, like, Lord, if I win that, I'll give you 20%. <laughs> like somehow God who created the universe needs the dirt of this world called gold and money. All right, if I give him 20, he'll give me 80. I'll, I'll snooker him. Yeah, right. But if I happen to win, be, be assured, uh, be assured, all right, the church will get a large chunk of change, all right? Parking lot and other things, uh, gymnasium, new gymnasium, things like that. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to win the lottery. I highly doubt it tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow brings forth, and neither do you. Neither do you. But I had a confident expectation of things not yet seen or experienced. I know that my Bible tells me I have a confidence that God will still be in charge. Why? Because he is God and he is only God. There is no other God but him. And I'm confident that he will still be God tomorrow. He's God today. He was God yesterday. He was God from eternity past. He'll be God all the way to the end of time and beyond that. I have a confident expectation, the essence of faith in things, ideas, or beliefs that we cannot see. In the Bible, there was a man named Thomas, and we have in Christendom called him sometimes Doubting Thomas. And Jesus Christ, after he rose from the dead, came back to the disciples, and he appeared to the disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. They told Thomas that Jesus had appeared to them, and he said, I won't believe it. I don't have a confident expectation in the things you tell me. I will only believe it if I can touch a little while later, Thomas was there and Jesus showed up. Thomas saw Jesus. I believe, Jesus said, come here, Thomas, touch. Hmm. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Is it just in what you see? Now you say, well, well pastor, it's not about Jesus, but you know, I don't know that God's going to work until after he does. Then I have faith in, in God. Faith says, I believe in God, I believe God before the solution comes. When the doctor says, I have some bad news, where's your faith? When the bill shows up in the mail, and the bank account doesn't have enough zeros for the bill, confidence that God will supply and do. Faith has a confident expectation, the essence of faith in things, ideas, and beliefs that we have not yet seen or experienced. A while back, I used an illustration about faith that I found that I thought it was so key. Sometimes people believe faith to be like a birthday wish. Birthday wish, they bring the candles and you think of a wish and blow the candles out and purportedly, whatever you wished will happen. I can tell you confidently that nothing that I ever wished before I blow up my birthday candles has really taken place because of that wish. But the example was in just a small earthly sense, faith is not like a birthday wish. Faith, if I can this morning, humor me, is like Amazon Prime. You say, Pastor, that's stretching it. Hear me out. I order things all of the time on Amazon Prime. I'm a man. I like packages. I like packages. For Spirit Week, on uh, one of the days was Superhero Day, we had my son dress up as the Amazon delivery guy. When he shows up, we get excited. My wife thought of it. I thought it was extremely clever. Just you know what else we did? My other son was my brother who's a Navy pilot. All right, armed service, they're superheroes. My daughter was a mom. Now, come on, ladies, right there. Say, oh, wow, that's special. That's special. But Amazon delivery guy, when I click order from Amazon, I have a confident expectation in something that I cannot see nor yet experienced. Now, wait with me. I've had past experience. We'll get to that. But when I click buy now, I have an expectation that that package will be here, well, now, within 14 years. When it shows up, I don't say, oh my goodness, they really did it. Man, they, the package actually came. Whoa, this has never happened before. It really, 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 really worked. No, of course it came. Why? I ordered it. Of course it is. It's coming. It's on the way. Where is it? Where is it? I can track it. Oh, it's on Williamson. They turned on to King Road. I'll meet him out in the parking lot. Confident 
expectation. The truth is we all have faith. We all exercise faith. I'm challenging us this morning to exercise our faith in God. Essence of faith is a confident expectation in things not yet seen nor experienced. But understand a few truths about this. Faith is not, is not all or nothing. Pastor Led had this phrase, which I, I coined, or I didn't coin, he coined it, I stole it. Faith is believing God 1% more than your doubt. If you're taking notes, write that down. If you're not taking notes, write that down. If you have your phone out, type it in. Faith is believing God 1% more than your doubt. I like that because what that acknowledges, what that, what, that, what that realizes is that at times, there will be times that we all struggle with some doubt. God, I know what you've said. I know, I know what I've seen I know what I want to happen, and Lord, I'm right here. I'm with you, but Lord, there's a part of me, there's something in me that just doubts just a little bit. Faith is believing God 1% more than your doubt. I wish our lives were 100% faith and zero doubt. And God desires that as well. We know in Scripture, though, that there are times that Jesus with the disciples, had to work through their doubt. You understand, they got to see and experience Jesus in a hands-on, physical way. John, in the book of 1 John, says, which our eyes have seen and our hands have handled of the word of life. They got to physically see people who were demonically oppressed, released from the demons, they got to see people who had never taken a step in their life walk. They got to see people who were blind could see. They got to see sins that they were forgiven. They got to see lives that were dead, passed away, brought back to life. They got to see it in a physical, real, touchable sense. And they still, at times, doubted. They weren't excused for the doubt. They were rebuked for the doubt, but they weren't cast out for the doubt. Aren't you glad that Jesus does not cast us out when our faith is small? Jesus rebuked small or little faith twice for clothing to people. He said, you're worried about clothes, you have a little bit of faith. I believe what he implies in that is that we get we get encumbered by the mundane things. Lord, are you going to work out my day-to-day -day life? And they were rebuked for their little faith in the mundane. One time in Scripture, they're rebuked because they're hungry. They're arguing about bread. There's not enough bread to feed everybody. And Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith. You're worried about bread. I can take care of the bread. In fact, he's called the bread of life. He, he, can, he is bread. One time they're rebuked for in a storm, doubting that Jesus could sustain them. I am thankful that that example is in Scripture. Because there are times in my life and your life when the storms, in a physical sense, in a health sense, in a financial sense, in a, relation, a, a relational sense, when there are storms... In the scripture, the waves are pounding the boat and, and the disciples think that they're about to die and Jesus rebukes them for their little faith. And many of you can relate to that feeling. When the waves of life, when the storms of life are crashing in so much, you think that there is no hope for survival. There is no way that I'm going to get through this. There is no way that there is an acceptable solution. The only solution is that I will be ruined that God will fail me. And Jesus rebukes, rebukes their faith. And then he rebukes Peter as he is walking on water and begins to sink. Now think about that. Peter's walking on water. He's made a few steps on water. We don't exactly know how far, but farther than you and I have gone on water. All right, he's walked on the water and he gets... He just turns aside and he looks at the, 
at the waves. He's the only disciple that got out of the boat. And as Jesus grabs his arm, he rebukes Peter. He rebukes him. In one sense, we say, well, that's not fair. Peter's the only one that got out. Peter's the only one that walked in the water. Lord, why are you rebuking him? Because Peter could have made it all the way through his faith in God to Jesus Christ. Peter didn't have to sink at all. Not one single centimeter did Peter have to go down in that water. Rebuked for his faith. God rebukes small and little faith, but they still had faith. It was just pretty small. They still had faith. It was just, it was just minuscule faith. But Jesus also recognized recognizes faith. Twice the Bible says that Jesus marveled at great faith. One time a man came and said, Jesus, I've got someone who's sick. Can you heal him? And, and, and he says, don't even come, just speak the words and it'll be done. And the Bible says that Jesus marveled at the man's faith, pointed it out to the disciples. He said, I've not seen such great faith. No, not in all of Israel. Jesus took notice of great faith. So this morning, Jesus, God, notices our faith. If it's small, he notices it's small. If it's large and great, he notices our faith. God notices the faith that we have in him. Faith it makes God marvel. And one time, Jesus marveled at extreme lack of faith. Jesus went to a, Jesus went to a village He's, and that's where he said, a prophet hath no honor in his own country. The Bible goes on to say that Jesus could not do great works here, and he marveled at their unbelief. Think about this. Everywhere, Je everywhere Jesus went, he did miracles, except back home. Testimony all over the place, wherever he walked, multitudes thronged to see Jesus. The sick were brought, and yet in hometown... Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. No honor in his own country. Could, couldn't move people. He marveled that they were so stubborn and so hard-hearted. And my friend, I'm afraid if we're not careful that God will marvel, but he may marvel sometimes because of our extreme lack of faith. Those who have seen him work year in and year out, day in and day out. There is that song, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll welcome you. It is no secret what God can do. And there are many in here who have seen the hand of God in their life. They've seen the touch of God over and over and over and over again. They've seen God work out situations that they felt were the storms of life and the waves of life. They felt the impossibility of the, of the situation, yet God somehow miraculously solved the situation. And another storm comes. It's almost as if faith is a solid wall again, and there's no faith. I wonder if when God notices your faith today, if he marvels because of your extreme faith or lack of faith. Faith is not all or nothing, and faith is not just founded on some unsubstantiated ideas. We find faith three ways from the Bible. We find, first of all, faith from the Word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If this morning God shows you that you have weak and small faith, my first encouragement would be to get into His Word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If your faith is small and weak, then get in the word of God. We also have a more sure word of prophecy, Peter says. Peter says, we heard the voice of God. We heard God speak from the heavens, and we have something even more concrete than that, and that is this wonderful book that he's given to us. We have faith, and we gain faith from the word. When you spend time in God's word, you develop faith. We have faith from the world. That's what the verse number three says in Hebrews chapter 11. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We can look around and we can see that there is something bigger than all of us out there. I have on my wrist a Samsung watch, a smart watch. What's amazing about this watch is how it came into being. You see, I had a bag. In that bag, I put some plastic, I put some dirt, and I blew it up. 
and out popped this watch that syncs with my phone. Isn't that amazing? Now, I had to blow it up 20 billion years ago. But after I blow it up, I just let it sit there, and it kept on being a better watch and a better watch and a better watch, and now it's, it's pretty cool. It happened all by itself. We all have faith. If you believe that, I've got some uh, beachfront property, miles of sand in Arizona to, to sell you. The Bible says that we can see an exercise of faith from the world, from the things that are framed or were framed by the word of God. And we have gained faith from personal witness. A few weeks back, I told you briefly in church that I decided to test my ranger on the ice of my pond. That night we were shoveling uh, for uh, shoveling for some hockey area. I told my wife, honey, I'm going to drive the ranger out here. We've got to plow on the front of it and make short work of it. This will be great. She goes, honey, I don't think the ice will hold you. Like a good man, I said, I'm sure it will. I read once that four inches of ice is safe to drive an ATV on. But I thought there's a, part of me had a little bit of doubt in there. So I slowly drove the ranger carefully under the front of the ice, on the edge of the ice, it's about 11 and a half feet with the plow on the front, and my wife's claimed she heard cracking, but I didn't hear any cracking, so a little further and a little further, and before you know it, like you heard the front of the ranger right through the ice. My heart rate elevated. Elevated heart rate. Mentioned in church, there are two things I realized that night. Number one, that the ice was not strong enough to hold my ranger. Second thing being that J.D. Howell did not own any toe, any toe straps. Ran over to the neighbor's house. He was gracious enough to come to the door. A wonderful man. I appreciate him so much. And he's like, you know, what can I do? I said, I need some toe straps. I don't have any. Do you have any chains? Yes. Can I borrow them? Yes. Okay. Got over there and we yanked it out. I, get, I had, actually had my wife in the ranger. The front of it was, it was in, in the water and uh, back two tires were still on dry ground. And she had to hit the gas on that. I pulled from my truck and we got it right out of there. My biggest concern at that point was that my wife would hit the back of my truck. I could see this. I could see this, man. Here I am. She's going to gun that thing. I'm going to pull her out. And she's going to bam, smack it. But she didn't. She did an amazing job. But like a man, it's been cold the last few weeks. And so yesterday, I want to try my ranger on the pond again. Now, you ladies are like, you moron. Why would you do that? Because at some point, the ice is thick enough for the ranger. I've done some research. I found out that three inches is new ice, not safe to walk on. Four inches, you can walk an ice fish. Five inches is an ATV. Eight inches, you can drive a small car. Ten to twelve, you can drive a, a, a truck on there. That's on, on, the inter, on the internet, and Google wouldn't lie to me. So I did one other step yesterday. I got a drill, and I measured the ice. I measured it. Now, would it really matter how thick it was? Was I driving the Ranger either way? Yep, I was. And I drove on the ice yesterday. I didn't fall through. Rangers didn't have to drag it out. I had toe straps this time. I had faith in this ice yesterday. But I'm going to tell you something. When I drove on, the, I drove on a portion of the pond over there where I thought if I really go in, it won't be too bad. I still had doubt. I still had doubt. Why? Because I've gone in before. But what's faith? Faith says, though there's doubt in here, I'm putting the pedal to the metal, I'm going through. And if I drop in, well, I drop in. Now, some of you think I'm a complete idiot. I understand that. What I'm encouraging you this morning, to put the pedal to the metal and put your faith in God. You say, well, it seems like God is it's not thick enough. Oh, my friend, it is. It is. It's not like the ice on my pond. It is thick enough. <laughs> One day, a story's told about a, about a lady having a rough day. She was on the way to doctors and had to grab her kids from daycare, grab a prescription from the store, make supper, and release the babysitter. So she had to run by Walmart. This was all before prayer meeting at church. She pulls into Walmart. It's raining out. Of course, she begins to pray, Lord, I need a front spot. I'm asking for a front spot at Walmart. Lord, I don't deserve one. I can survive without one, but I'd like one. And almost as she began to pray, the best spot in the lot, as the story goes, 
person began to back up. Oh my goodness, she drove right toward it. And as she pulled in, she goes, never mind, Lord, something just opened up. <laughs> Stories told about a town that had been historically free from alcohol. Then a local man decided to open up a bar. Church members got together from local church. They had an all-night prayer meeting asking God to intervene. As the account goes, shortly thereafter, lightning hit the bar and it burned to the ground. And the bar sued the church. And they claimed in court that the Christians had caused the bar to be burnt to the ground and they were subject and entitled to the proceeds from the damages. The church hired a lawyer who argued in church they were not responsible for that. The presiding judge, after his initial review of the case, made this statement. He said, no matter how this case turns out, one thing is clear. The bar owner believes God answers prayer, and Christians of this church do not. How's your faith this morning? Some put their faith in the Quran or Muhammad. Some in graven images. Some in their faith in themselves or their works. Some in their wealth. But true faith is only as good as the object. And the one that I'm asking you to put your faith in today is Jesus Christ. I wonder, my friend, if you've allowed faith to grow small. Maybe there have been times of tremendous faith in your life. Maybe you can think back to times where you saw God work. But I wonder right now if your faith is tiny. My friend, come back and put your faith only in God. God is the God of the impossible. Don't settle for the possible. God says have childlike faith. Don't settle for cynical faith. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you that you always do what you say you will. Thank you that you've never let anyone down. Lord, help us this morning. Lord, would you touch us? Would you challenge us? Lord, there may be someone here whose faith has been tested. Now, Lord, this morning, if they're honest, it's, it's small. Lord, I'm glad that though you may rebuke us for small faith, you've never cast us away. I wonder if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, as you spoke, God spoke to me. My faith is not maybe what it's supposed to be, what it was. In fact, God may even be marveling at the weakness of my faith. Pastor, would you pray for me that I would exercise the great faith that I'm supposed to have, that I want to have, that I desire to have. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. I would say, Pastor, as you spoke, God spoke to me. Would you pray for me? Slip that hand up, slip back down. We'll see it. Amen. Amen. Hands all over. That's me. Pastor, my faith has been tested. Quite frankly, I don't know that I'm passing the test right now. But I want to. Who else? I didn't raise my hand before, but I'll raise it now. Uh, God spoke to me this morning. Would you pray for me this morning? I didn't raise it my hand before, but I'll raise it now. Amen. I see that. Who else? I see that. I see that. I see that. I wonder if there's someone here this morning who said, you know, Pastor, as you spoke, you spoke about trusting Jesus Christ for forgiveness from sins, and I've never put my faith in Jesus Christ to forgive my sins. I don't know that if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. I'd like to. I think I may, but I don't know that I've put my faith in Jesus Christ. My friend, if that's you, we'd love to open a Bible and show you how you can know for sure that God loves you and Jesus died for you. I wonder if you'd say, Pastor, would you pray for me this morning? I don't know that I've ever done that before, but I, I'd like to. I, I won't embarrass you, my friend. I didn't embarrass anyone else this morning. I'd love to pray for you. Would, would you be willing to acknowledge that? Say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. I've never put my faith even to begin with in God or Jesus Christ. But I, 
I'd like to know more about that. Would you pray for me when you pray for those? Just slip your hand up and slip it back down. I'll see it. I wonder if you're here like that this morning. I'd say, that's me. Lord, you've seen these hands. You know the hearts. Lord, we can have our full confidence in you. Lord, we must come to you by faith. Lord, those who indicated that you've touched their heart, may they respond the way they ought to. Lord, may they exercise and walk in faith, not in fear or doubt this morning. Lord, strengthen us, renew us. Lord, forgive us for those times we doubt. Lord, if there's someone here or online who's never trusted you, Lord, I pray that today would be the day they trust you for their salvation. Lord, bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.